Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Gabrielle. I feel like I know most of you, but if I don't, um, I'm really happy to have you. So this is going to be a story time, <laughs> so get ready for it. I am going to say, if you haven't already listened to the episode called uh, A Way to a Crystalline Vessel, please uh, go back and refresh because I'm not going to repeat really the stuff that happened in that episode, but it will tie into this one. So this is all about the liver cleanse, and I this week went into my second liver cleanse and so many things unfolded and I want to bring you on that journey with me so that you understand that the deeper that you go into your densities, uh, they become much more exaggerated than <laughs> the first time around. So in that uh, Away to a Crystalline Vessel episode, I talked about my first uh, liver cleanse which is um, through the protocol of Andreas Moritz. And um, just my like takeaways, my suggestions, all the things. So I, this time around, I knew it was time for another cleanse. And I prepared, I got the the Epsom salt capsules. So I knew I was going to have that support instead of having to drink Epsom salt directly. So I was like thinking, oh, this, this is going to be a fairly piece of cake, you know, like it's not going to be that difficult. But man, was I wrong. It was way more intense than the first one. And the way that I feel about it now on the other side is that the first layer of those gallstones being removed were like just the tip of the iceberg. It was like the deep, this is how I'm feeling it. The deeper we go into those um, densities, the more stuff is purging with those densities. So the begin the first part of the cleanse is five to six days of apple juice, which that part is not difficult. Then you have to have um, a colon hydrotherapy session, which again, for me, not that difficult, it was okay. But I was supposed to start the cleanse on last Friday. And the way that you prepare for the actual cleanse is you only have a very light breakfast and then you don't eat until you don't eat the whole day. And at 6 p.m. is when you start the Epsom salt protocol. So my partner Richard got home around, I don't know, four or five, and he wanted to go out to dinner. And I was like, uh, I'm going to do my, my colon cleanse tonight. And he was like, oh, well, do you need to? Can you, can you do it another day? And that was kind of my mistake. Like, I don't know why I planned it on a day that we usually go out to dinner or, you know, over the weekend where we do stuff together. Now I know if I can do it on my own during the week, it's much better. <laughs> so I was like, uh, yeah, I, I'll postpone it. Cause at that point I'm starving. I'm kind of like, oh, do I, you know, it's kind of was like an excuse to postpone it. And I knew I had to postpone it till Sunday because Saturday night I had already made plans to go to dinner with my mom. So I knew, okay, I'm going to postpone it for two days, which means that you just do the apple, apple juice, the liter of apple juice for two more days. Okay. So that's the setting the story. What happened is that on Saturday, Richard and I were like going nonstop. We got up at seven. We went to breakfast. Then we um, we came back home and we're like planning out and, and like discussing starting a vegetable garden. And then we decided to go downtown and, and check out this artisan bakery. And then we decided to go to um, a nursery and talk to some people there about like starting the garden. And we were just like in the car going, going, going all day long. And around three o'clock, well, let me just say this, a couple things happened in that that experience. The man that ended up helping us in, in the nursery ended up being like an angel from I don't even know where. He was like the horticulture of all angels. He has like his masters in horticulture and he was like, nope, no problem. I'm going to help you guys through this. We're going to do it together. Like he got us like so hyped up on starting this vegetable garden that we were like, we're invincible. We can do anything. And even Richard said while we were talking to him, I feel like honest. No, he goes, 
on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you? And I was like, I guess 10. He goes, I'm at a 12. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's like how much like love and support this man gave to us. And then um, he was telling us, <clears throat> excuse me, that we're going to need a tiller, which right um, next to this nursery, there was a, a equipment rental place. So we decided to stop there to see what is a tiller and can it fit in our car and whatever. So we, we go in, we're talking to this other guy and he brings us outside and he shows us what a tiller is and Richard checks to see if he can pick it up himself. And what I notice about this guy is that he has a tattoo on his, it would be his left hand that said, R.I.P. Mom. So rest in peace, Mom. And I'm standing there and all of a sudden, this feeling just comes over me that I need to touch him. <laughs> and I was like, like, I, you know, I, I haven't had this happen before, but I felt like something is moving through me and I felt like my feet were like, um, like nailed to the ground. And Richard looks at me and he goes, okay, are we finished? Let's go. And I looked at him like with eyes pleading because I didn't know what to do. And I could, I didn't know what to say because the man's right there. And I just was like, and I turned to the guy and I just like, the, the feeling that I had is that I needed to touch him. And I didn't know what, what else I was, you know, supposed to do, but it felt like, okay, in hindsight, it felt like his mom was with me and I was supposed to give him like the encouragement or, or this like nurturance. So I turned to face him and I just put my, my right hand on top of his left hand and I, and I looked at him and I said, I saw your tattoo. And he was like, huh? And I said, I, I feel your tattoo. And he was like, oh, and then I got scared. I didn't know what else she wanted me to say. I didn't know. So I, I was like, okay, bye. Thank you very much. And I, because <laughs> I finally was able to move. And then I got, we had taken his card. And the next day I was in the shower and I'm like, oh, am I supposed to reach out to him and tell him what happened? And I still haven't acted on that. But just like there was some energy that wanted me to, to, touch him and I'm waiting for a sign if they want me to say more but at this point it was the first time I've ever had this where I couldn't I didn't have control over my body at that moment like it was felt like you're going to do this it's gonna feel weird it's gonna feel uncomfortable but you're gonna get through it and you're gonna do it and I was and and there were no words it just was a feeling so that was like the like the first thing that I was like, hmm, okay. So then we go and we're going to the next place. We went to another nursery and then we were going to go to a farmer's market. Like we were just going, going, going the whole day. At three o'clock, Richard hits a wall and he's like, I'm hungry. And I was like, I go, well, do you have snacks in the car? And he goes, I'm not a child. And I was like, uh, I have snacks in my car. I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> and... He was like, no, I don't have snacks. And he got, he was kind of short where all day he, I told you he had been like on a 12. He was so excited, so excited. So he's like, okay, let's go to the farmer's market. And he tells me, um, oh, it's supposedly in a, in the parking lot of a bakery supply store. And we had never been to this farmer's market. So I didn't know where it was. I, I opened up um, Yelp and I just Googled or I put in, bakery supply lakeside and it came up and I just pushed directions and my phone automatically goes to Apple Maps which I don't know if I've ever talked to you guys about this but Richard has something very much against Apple Maps I don't really know where it's seeded from but he cannot stand and and I navigate a lot because especially when we're in the van going on van trips he has asked me I mean, at least five times never to use Apple Maps again. In his mind, it brings us the the, the wrong way or a roundabout way or I don't know. He thinks it's not going to get us there. My experience is that's not true. But in his mind, he doesn't want to even have that energy near us. So because I was in, 
Yelp and push directions, it just opened up a map and whatever. It started, you know, giving us directions. So we're on the freeway and he he exits and he's supposed to go straight and he flips out. And I'm talking like he OK, I'm going to say he probably has a meltdown at least once a year. Like if I'm honest, like I can't I'm not sure of the last one, but like I would say they're about a year apart. But when they happen, it is like a full on meltdown. He starts because he he made this exit and he was supposed to go straight, he's like, don't even tell me that that is Apple Maps. And I was like, I don't know. And I, because I don't care. I, I was like, let me look. And sure enough, it was Apple Maps. I go, oh, you need to exit and, and turn around. He's like, I am not turning around. And he's like, I don't, he goes like, I don't even know what is wrong with you. Like he just starts screaming at me and it gets to the point where he says, do you want to get out of the car? And I'm just looking at him like, what is going on? Like literally a half an hour ago, he was out of 12. He's literally dropped down so dense that I am just like shocked. And the only thing I said is don't speak to me like that. And then he just got silent. He got on the freeway and brought us right home. Then we get home and he's like, and I'm not going to dinner. And I was like, yeah, no. I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. Because there's no way I want to be around this guy and this energy. So he's in it. Like he is deep in it. And I'm just like sitting there like, what happened? You know, I know he was hungry. I know he doesn't like Apple Maps, but like there, there's no logical reason for this to set him like all the way, like in this anger way he had been. <sighs> so I have to sit with it. And I go to dinner with my mom. And ultimately, also what's happening at this time is a, a friend of mine, Aisha, who I've introduced to you guys, um, we start talking about my dad. And my dad has not been in my life. My parents got divorced when I think I was one or two, and he didn't raise us. So I don't know him, and he's never parented me, but I know who he is. But she, we had started working through my Saturn again because my Saturn has been coming up again big time. And it's in Leo, like right on the cusp of the 10th and 11th house. And that is like what I would call my kryptonite because <laughs> it is the area of myself where I don't have confidence and I, I don't know how to be in the world with confidence. Like that's if I if I explain it to you guys in my body, that's how it feels. Like I'm always doubting myself. I'm always like, oh, I'm not ready. I don't know why. Like mainly it's around teaching. So um, she's like, you know what? Saturn is what you were supposed to learn from your dad had he been in your life. So maybe you could try to like find out like what, what does your mom, does she have anything good to say about him? Like ask her when they met, like what was it that attracted, you know, them together? So at this dinner, I end up going to see my mom by myself and I'm asking her these questions and she's like, like kind of looking at me like with a blank stare like she has nothing good that she remembers about him and why they got together she was 16 he was 20 they met at, met at a bowling alley and the th- one thing she tells me is he he knew how to like stand up to people and I was like what does that mean and she goes well I mean like if someone were like joking about him or like putting him down he he was not afraid to stand up to people and I was like And that's a good quality? Like, what? And she goes, no, but that's all I can remember of how he acted and how he was. I was like, so you're saying like he was like a bully? And she's like, well, I don't know. I mean, I can't think of any other reason and I of why we got together. I don't know. And I was like, okay. I mean, granted, this is a long time ago, but so I reach out to my aunt and I asked her if she happened to know his birth date or birth information. Um, And she finds my aunt who has like all of the, you know, the old photos and the old things from my grandparents. Um, She finds his birth card. So now I'm like, oh, we have not only the birth date, but the time. So um, I knew like, okay, there's there's definitely going to be something here for me. Um, And in the uh, let's see. 
I also asked my aunt if she had anything that she could share with me. We all know the negative parts of him, but I was trying to find the positive qualities of what would he, how would he have taught me how to be in the world? Like, how would he have given me the confidence that I feel like I'm missing? If Saturn represents that, that lessons that we were supposed to receive from our fathers, like, what, what, do, what don't I have? Like, what, it, what do I feel so um, lacking? And she couldn't tell me anything good either. Because she, she has said, and my mom told me at dinner that night, like, she he terrorized her as a child. So I didn't have like no one that knows him could, t could guide me in that way. And I got back home and I brought Richard dinner. He didn't touch it. He didn't want, he, oh, he went into our theater room and closed the door. He didn't even want to see me. Like he was so deep in this, this muck that he just shut down. And I, th I think he went to sleep. I don't even know what he did, but he didn't want anything to do with me. So I went, got home, went to bed. And then come Sunday, I knew like, okay, today's my, my cleanse day, which means that I can only eat breakfast. And, and I, you know, then I have to start the cleanse at 6 p.m. Well, I brought the dogs out for a walk. And then when I got home, he was down in like the garden area. And so I went down and I walked up to him and I gave him a hug. And he kind of didn't even like, it's not like he, he did like a tap, tap hug. Like you could tell he's still in it. I'm like, okay. So he went about his day. I went about my day. No interaction. And... I, I was like, okay, well, he's still in it. Like, I don't know. I can't, there's nothing that I can say to make this move quicker. And I also know that the, the thing, the catalyst that drove him here, in my mind, is so ins insignificant that I don't understand, like... Like I could say, look, I did change my default map to be Google Maps. But when you use certain apps, it 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 automatically goes to Apple Maps. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't even know what else to say. It's it, to me so ridiculous. But anyways, he he's not he doesn't want to discuss it. He doesn't want to even look at me all day Sunday. And then that night uh, I was working in my office and my friend Aisha had taken it upon herself to do a reading on my dad's chart because I shared the time with her. And this started to really illuminate a lot for me, which is, of course, you know, nothing is uh, a coincidence. He has many planets right where my, my Saturn is. He has a whole stellium of planets in that, in the 10th and 11th house. And um, it, there, my, my Saturn is conjunct all of them really mainly Venus and then it goes Pluto his um his south node Mercury his ascendant and also right before that is a sun and his moon so he, his whole energy is right there sitting on my Saturn and yet she tells me that he has um his Mars is in the second house and his Chiron is in the fourth house, which means that for a soul that's dealing with those heavy planets, if you start in the first, you, the way she explains it to me is we start in the, the ascendant and then we go to first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then that's your like childhood years. And then once you like are at seventh and up, that's like your outward facing life. So someone having their Mars and their Chiron in these like informative years of your life, and that's it. There's no other no other energy there. He had a he had a really rough childhood. He came in as a very sensitive um, person. Uh, his Sun and his Moon are conjunct in um, Cancer. So she described that he needed to be nurtured and he wasn't nurtured in the way that his soul was needing. And so he picked up the Mars energy, which um, he was raised on a farm. They, you know, weren't, uh, they were poor. They, my grandmother was raising a lot of children by herself because he was out working. She had three gardens, a bunch of animals and five kids. <laughs> so... There wasn't much time for her to give that affection. And his fourth house is 
Scorpio, which happens to be what my mother's sign is, my mother's sun sign. So she brought up like, it's not no coincidence that he ended up with your mom, because usually people like are attracted to their mother figure, which is this like kind of cold standoffish energy. Um, and in my father's case, I don't think we've talked about this before, but the reason they got divorced is that he became an abusive person. He was an alcoholic and physically abused my mom. And, you know, eventually she leaves him. Um, the only memory that I have of this time in my life was I my first hypnosis, hypnosis regression. He counted me down into the womb and had me experience what that felt like. And I started shaking uncontrollably. And he was like, what's happening? And I, and I was like, I don't know. He's like, well, is it your energy or is it outside of you? And I could distinguish that it wasn't me. It was happening outside of me. And the moment he said, you're not here to hold other people's trauma, I stopped shaking. And so what I felt in that time or in that space of being in the womb is it was very traumatic. Now, my mom, I know, was being abused. I'm sure that not only the physical, but the emotional stress on her was I was feeling it as as an embryo in there. So I don't know the details and I don't need to know the details, but I felt it. Um, eventually, she ends up leaving him. And again, it for me, it is before I have a, a conscious memory of him being them being together. I don't have any memories of them being married or together. So yeah, she said, if someone turns to a substance with this kind of chart, it's really likely that they aren't able to ever get past those heavy placements. And in the case of my father, he hasn't. He became an alcoholic. Um, he's not in my life. I have, I saw him at my grandmother's funeral. Um, and you know, it was not about me or him. So we were cordial and it was fine, but there, there's just nothing there. Um, but here's what happened in that, that experience. I saw for the first time a compassion come through this reading like I could see his wounds and I could see that if he came in here with a, a very sensitive soul and chose this life and it handed him all of these obstacles right from the get-go like she she described it from age like one to ten that's where all the trauma was and if that is the case it would make sense why he became an alcoholic and why he abused himself, you know, other people. I know wounded people wound others, and that is just an unconscious trait that passes. And now I have a new view of him and have compassion for myself because now I can see instead of feeling like this lack of not understanding myself as a Leo energy. I know why, you know, I know there's wounding there and all of the things that the, that I berate myself about, about not being ready or not being prepared or not being good enough. Like I know now why they're there and where they're coming from. And, you know, as we move through the, the chart and the experience, we have so many alignments that really trigger and show that I'm carrying this lineage in my body and I'm here to release it. So that like coming through as a surprise on this Sunday night as I'm, you know, preparing to do the cleanse or actually in the cleanse felt like, okay, no nothing happens out of coincidence in, in my life for sure not. So I'm always like, okay, the, now I know what I'm working with. Like, I know why Richard's not talking to me. I know that I need to sit with this. And I know that all of this emotion is coming up for me because it's time to purge it. So then as I move through the cleanse, I'm I'm discovering that it's not just a physical body cleanse this time. So this is my second uh, time doing the cleanse. And if, if you go back, you'll know that I said, once you start the cleanse, you keep going until all of the stones are out, which they say you can have up to 
2,000 stones. My first cleanse I released, I would say 40 maybe. I mean, I, I didn't count them, but that's what I would guess it to be. So going into this one, I was like, you know, like it, the first time felt like just a physical experience. It, it didn't tie to my emotional state. But as all of this information is coming up and my one support or who I look at as my biggest support in this life, Richard, is totally closing the door on me. He's saying, you're on your own here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so the next day I wake up, he still doesn't want to look at me. I'm like, okay. I, and I go into the cleanse, like you start purging, like, and these stones are just coming through. And this time it's hundreds of them. And I'm sitting there on the toilet, like, like every self doubt, mean talk I can say to myself is bubbling up. And I don't, it's not like I berate myself often. So I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, this energy is moving through me and look at where you are and look at what, like what you're doing. You're literally purging stones out of your body. <laughs> so is it a wonder that this is coming up? I felt the absolute worst that I've ever felt in, in, in this life experience because I was consciously aware that all of the things that I hate hate about myself for feeling stuck and not being able to really push past that Saturn <sighs> were coming through, you know, and like it felt like anchors, literal anchors being dropped out of my body. <laughs> and it was perfect, you know, like I, I, I didn't get out of my pajamas that day. I literally just sat with it and just let my body move through it and let myself like feel the pain that is in my lineage. Because if it's one thing I know, when we're here to hold that space and move energy through our bodies, you have to feel it to move it, right? Like you have to let those densities, and I'm talking like, they weren't rational. It wasn't like it, they're any, like the one of the ones that kept repeating is you are exactly where you were a year ago. You have done nothing this year. You have done nothing that you wanted to do. Your life is meaningless. Like these are the things that were coming through. And that's not what I believe. So as I'm like sitting there and these ideas and thoughts are floating up, I'm just like, okay, like obviously this is coming from a part of me that, yes, I carry threads of and I have experienced when I try to like push beyond my Saturn and really understand it and embrace it and love on it and embrace that sun Leo self of me. Um, but I don't go that deep. Like I don't go to those steps. And so there I am like just sitting in it and being like, okay, like, this is, you know, maybe this is the new me. Like, I don't know where this is coming from. And then as the cleanse, like, go, moves through me the rest of the day, you know, I'm just, I can't, I can't even really do much else. Like, I honestly, I don't even know if I brushed my teeth that day. <laughs> and then Richard came home from work. And the first thing that he did is he walked up to me, he gave me a kiss and he said, I'm sorry, there, there are no words to express how sorry I am. And right away, I felt like scoops back up into my, my like anchor, like or in my what I call like my safety net, like he is my rock in this life, like everything. If you know me, my life is swimmingly great, as long as my relationship with him is is cohesive and peaceful. If he's in a mood, I'll give him space. And I don't like, you know, try to fix it for him. But I feel it. I feel it so deeply. So my I feel like my home job is to make sure that he's taken care of in his emotional space. And when he does hit a low, I there's nothing I can do. And I know like if I try to get in there, it, it's only going to backfire. And, and you know, it's not it, I have to let him ride it out. So the moment that he came home and he he held me and it was genuine, I was like, okay, I'm I'm back and I can be it's safe for me to come back into this body and like understand now 
from hindsight what just happened. And then the next day I had a meeting with um, the, my AFG partners and we were looking at this This particular meeting was for me only and, and really trying to tune into what energies are coming up for me as we go into our, our next um, gateway. And it just so happened that this worked out this way. Although, of course, nothing is a coincidence. And actually, Aisha said to me, I think the night before, why don't we do your your meet and greet tomorrow? And I was like, huh, okay. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but okay. But then, because I had passed through this portal of pain, I was able to just like lay it out. And we looked at the charts together. And she's like, and I was explaining how Richard had been so distant from me as as we move through this and it was because of him that I delayed the 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 cleanse so that I could go even deeper and that he could pull away from me and it was like you know the perfect storm and she's looking at the charts and she's like where's your Chiron and I was like uh it's in my seventh she's like yeah that's why and I was like why she's like that's like where your wound is and in seventh house is your relationship so he was like saying like I'm going to be the one here that's going to trigger this in you so that you can go to the depths of this despair and sit in it in your own and come out the other side in yourself. And before I started, of course, I, pu I pull cards before I start uh, any of these episodes. But of course, the card that I pulled is Chiron. <sighs> and I'm going to read it because I feel like as we move through these these cleanses and the more that I understand why these cleanses are coming into my experience and some of yours is that we can only ascend in our spirit in our like consciousness to a, a point but if you want the vessel to be healthy and move with you you have to clear what is the densest parts of you it's the liver it's the thing that filters out everything and if you Google gallstones, you're going to see what I'm talking about. They look, it looks like a pomegranate cut open with all of these stones in it. And it says that the, they're created from the bile that builds up in the liver that's not able to pass through the gallbladder. They harden into stones. And, you know, this can be from the biles, I think, from fats and cholesterols. And even if you eat healthy, like I'm vegetarian, I eat pretty healthy, you have them. You have 2,000 of them. And think about that. Like, what amount of weight is that in your body? <laughs> Some people actually get pain. It's on the right side, right underneath kind of the rib cage is where the liver is, and the gallbladder is right underneath that. So some people will get, like, pain in that side of their, um, their abdomen. You... Like me, I intuitively knew it's time to clean them. But other people will get to the point of pain. So... Here's what Chiron says to us. It's wounds, teachings, and paradoxes. Chiron is a cosmic enigma. In Greek mythology, he is said to be the rejected son of Saturn, who through the pain of abandonment becomes a great teacher and healer. I would, like, if I am honest, that's how I feel about my relationship with my father. I understand why he wasn't in my life, and I know that had he been in my life, it would have been more traumatic. But I also carry this wound of abandonment. I feel like, especially with male figures, I mean, and look at now, my brother also has abandoned me in a way that hits right at the core of, of you know, anything. Because if I think of the men in my life, it was my grand, my mother's father, my grandfather, my father, my brother, and now Richard. So when any one of them is like triggering that pain that my father initiated, it's it brings me to the depth, depths of my pain. Such is the paradoxical nature of this minor planet. It demonstrates that our pain is a great resource. It will guide us to our deepest purpose if we are able to observe it and slowly gently slowly, gently, and with support. When Chiron, when the Chiron card appears, know that you are being called to deepen the work, to delve into tender parts of yourself that require patience and forgiveness. Victim mentality will only get you nowhere. Your past blaming. It's time to let your painful experiences serve as a beacon of light to others. Chiron reminds us 
of where we've been and where that allows us to go. So as I sat with this Saturn placement of like all my perceived limitations, Chiron was coming in and being like, and I'm going to help you by pulling Richard away from you because you're going to sit in this and come out the other side a healed person. But the interesting thing is it's not healed from... Like I became consciously aware through understanding my father's chart, but the healing is coming from within me to understand that I am resource. Like all of these things that I perceive as limitations in my own experience are just that that perspective that I carry because it's in my blood, but it's not real. You know, like none of these things of limitation are actually real. My life is aligned to move as forward as I want to. I don't have limitations. I'm my worst limitation. <laughs> and Chiron really helped me to to kind of dig to the, the depths of that that pain to transmute it. So the next day, I got up at 6 a.m., I jumped in the shower, went for a walk, like took care of all the things in the house, and I was on that meeting. It felt like a brand new person because I'm not carrying that pain anymore. You know, I'm not like, like if it's unconscious, it's like this backpack that you carry around with you no matter where you go, and you're going to be swinging it into people. It's going to be heavy. You're going to be exhausted. That feels like whoosh, and now I'm back to the center. And I know 100% that it is this liver cleanse that did it. So in this time, there were hundreds of stones that released. And now I know each time I go into this liver cleanse, which again, they say that once you start it, you should continue to do it until you get at least 2,000 stones out or you stop seeing stones come out and then you do an update or a maintenance every six months. But I, it's, it's, a, it's a road. Like I think there's like six more. I think it's like about six, they say that until you're, you're clean. And my God, what else is in there? <laughs> like what depths? And I just feel like, how did we stumble upon a way to consciously and physically clean the vessel of these densities. Like, I don't even know. So I don't know yet what I'm titling this episode, but I hope that it helps you guys to understand that when you're on this path, you have to do the maintenance of the vessel. Like you can't just ascend out of it. We chose these these bodies and it has to come with us if you're carrying that trauma it has to be released so that the system can accept more light and more movement and I'm not kidding you this happened two days ago already new lights being able to drop in I've been waiting for something to come to me um in my town for I would say six months and just today it dropped in it's like here you go on a platter here it is I, I know that as I move through my experience, the more weight that I can drop in these like perceived uh, condition responses and also uh, limitations, it's like bringing the whole system up so that it it's like you move above the clouds to see, oh, wait, the sun's been there the whole time. I just couldn't embrace it or feel it because I wasn't ready. I was not ready to receive that next level of light. So this this beautiful uh, sign that dropped in for me today, I know I'll do an episode on it in the future and share with you guys the beautiful light that's coming. But just know that, oh, please clean your liver if it feels right. Like don't do it because I'm telling you, feel into the organ, feel into yourself and know, is this the right time for me? Like, am I too sensitive to go down that path? Also, if you want to take a lighter uh, edging in, I talk about this all the time. I started with celery juice. That was a big process for me for like two and a half years. And then I moved to a year of eating kale every day. So there are ways to ease into it. This is a pretty intense way to go at, go at it. But if you're feeling it and you happen upon this video, I would say it's calling you too.